Hey, don't you like that traffic noise in the background? Here we go. Now, the sun was out about 10 minutes ago, but I don't control the weather. Make sure to make fun of my uh, colorful pinwheel back there that was given to me as a gift, so, but make sure to make fun of it, because, you know, it's social media. I have uh, my Ocmo 1000 uh, watt uh, power station here. No, I actually paid for this. I'm not getting kickbacks, no affiliate links. I've never posted an affiliate link. Um, I actually did a lot of research in uh, picking out uh, the best power station, better than the Jackery. I think it's roughly about uh, 18 amp hours more power for $250 less than the 1000 watt Ocmo. Also too, if I could zoom in here, we actually have uh, three AC power outlets. We actually have input for solar and also two for a wall charger. The unit does come with a regular wall charger right there through the DC uh, input power connector. This is an Anderson power pole connector. We also have a cigarette lighter out and we have uh, three USB, including a USB-C right at the base there. It's actually really nice. These are 100 watts each, so I have a total of 200 watts if you get the package which I did. I was gonna buy the solar separate, but there's a wasp. Wasp was the solar. It comes with a Anderson power pole Y connector, so you can actually hook both up. But if you just wanna hook one up or hook it into another power station, if you happen to have another power station, there is an Anderson power pole, which actually connects from the solar panel right there, the Anderson power pole connector. And you have uh, different connection options on the other end, uh, three different, uh, DC connector plugs and an Anderson power pole connector. As you can see here, so each one of those comes with that. You can actually see, there's also two on these particular solar panels. These are 23% peak efficiencies. There's a USB-C and a regular USB-B version. You can't possibly see it, the red light there showing that it's charging. You would not really position the solar panels like this, but since this table is only so large, it's for demonstration purposes, and the sun was out 20 minutes ago, you would not position these solar panels like that because this one solar panel relative to the incident sun would be blocking out this portion of the solar panel so yes i know you would not position the second solar panel like that anyway these are the uh, very lightweight kickstands uh, for the back of the unit Fold it up these are incredibly lightweight also too i think what are they 276 dollars a piece um for each one of these like i said they're 100 watts there's uh, neodymium magnets right here that actually closes it up. There's actual genuine wires in the hinge. The one thing that uh, another company, <coughs> Zero, uh, <laughs> has is a flexi cable running between the two solar panels that connects to power output. And after X number of flexes, just as you bend a piece of wire X number of times, you end up with an issue. There's actually a genuine wire group that runs here between one panel and the next. So. Um, I use this for a cabin. The only thing that you'll actually hear are people that have no idea about power. And uh, you'll actually find that on Amazon. And it's important to point it out because people read a negative review and Jackery's the same. It doesn't matter who you buy. They'll say, oh, you know, I plugged in my uh, my air conditioning unit into it. And for some reason, it, it wouldn't power it. <laughs> it. These units are not designed for high amperage like that. They're designed for like a camper uh, high efficiency uh, blenders, microwaves, you know, coffee makers, charging your laptop, uh, you know, uh, just think of all the countless little devices and things you need for an emergency that you need to charge or power in your computer, any size computer, no problem, power it fine for quite a long time. It's not made for hooking up to it, like, I'm gonna go out in the woods and bring a portable air conditioning. No, high amperage devices like that, you could use even a low amperage um, efficient uh, mini fridge uh, to power off this 1000 uh, watt unit but uh, it doesn't matter if it's a 2000 watt unit the amperage is too high on those so when you actually see a negative review like that you'll actually look at them and I've looked at all of them they're written by people that have no idea about current there's a neat little word starts with a C current you can't handle the current it doesn't matter if it's a Sokmo unit or a Jacker unit or anything else Anyway, this is the best value for the money, and uh, I put my money where my mouth is. And no, I didn't get it for free, and no, I don't get any kickbacks, and I don't have any affiliate links. You can find this on Amazon and a couple other places. But for emergencies, you can actually stick this in the back seat, and these two folded up on top of each other is nothing. Folded up both of these, the thickness of both of these is about like that, so nothing. There's a carry handle on the Ocmo 1000. 
You can see it's charging right now. Now the sun comes back out. Barely, a little bit, the sun's back out. On both of these, under ideal conditions, and there's roughly four factors, including temperature, uh, the incidence of the light, the intensity of the light, there's a couple other factors that affect uh, charging, uh, recharge time. Uh, on, but there's a lithium iron, excuse me, lithium ion battery in uh, the Ocmo 1000 and 2000. But the five factors that affect recharge time, roughly with both of these under ideal conditions, you're looking at uh, um, nine to 12 hours for a complete recharge if this unit is down at 15%. However, you should not drain this battery to zero, nor should you drain any lithium ion battery to zero. That is a mistreatment of a lithium battery. I wrote the article for Apple on how to take care of lithium batteries. In laptops, they love floating around 50 to 60%. They don't like to be quick discharged and they do not like to sit low. So that's the rule of lithium ion batteries. Um, of course, you would not want to leave this floating around 50 or 60. For an emergency, you'd want to leave it charged up. That's perfectly understandable, obviously so. But for taking in uh, my vehicle for uh, an emergency sake, uh, for a, a power outage, I mean, I can't think of anything more ideal than a portable power station. Once again, also too, that I've not mentioned in this video, the charge controller on these units relative to solar, because you have solar panels, and just say you have some lead acid batteries, right? Which are extremely heavy. A lead acid battery weighs a lot, 100 amp hour lead acid weighs way more than just this whole unit together. You just have solar panels, you need a charge controller, and you need a power inverter. So not only do you have the battery inside this unit, what essentially this is on a power station like this, if you don't know anything about solar, is that the charge controller is built in. You have to have a charge controller with the solar panel. You have a solar panel to the charge controller, and then the charge controller, um, excuse me, the, the battery to uh, the power inverter. You actually basically have uh, four things in a solar system setup. Doesn't matter if it's large or small. You have your solar panels, you have your charge controller, you have your power inverter, preferably a pure sine wave inverter, which this has, and of course the battery, and the battery's in here. So other than the solar panels, the other three things are right here. Everything you have in here is both your charge controller, your pure sine wave inverter, and of course the 1,000 watt battery. It's roughly about 86 amp hour battery inside this, and it's lithium battery. So. Those are your four major components of any solar system setup. Solar panel, charge controller, power inverter, and of course, obviously, the battery. But if you just want to use this solar panel by itself without the, uh, the system, another solar panel or uh, the, uh, the power station, there, like I said, there is a USB-C and a USB connector, as you can see right here, in the unit for charging up your iPad and or your iPhone. Yeah, so you can certainly do that. Anyway, thanks so much for watching. I had a few people ask me about how I had it set up. You would not put this panel like this relative to this one, as I said before, because you can see how much, even though the sun's coming back out again, you can see how much light is being blocked right here. I'm just doing that for demonstration purposes only. The reason I have to say that, because I know someone would radically attack me. It's like, oh, you should never position solar panels like that. You got one blocking the light from the other. And the answer is yes, I, I know that fact. Thank you. So. Anyway, if you get the system, you get the Y power connector that lets you join both uh, 100 watt panels into the Ocmo. And I said, uh, this one specifically is an Anderson power pole connector, but it does come, each solar panel does come with this cable set that lets you connect it to other power stations and other power options and two USB, two USB ports for uh, charging without the power station itself. Thanks so much for watching. Goodbye.